He told me crying is not possible. I can't do anymore. Cristiano Ronaldo has shed a few tears over the years because his life could have taken a different turn many times. His destiny could have been tragic, but he had the strength to turn a potential nightmare into a dream. It's kind of a dream. We've chosen 10 touching, funny, and memorable quotes which changed Cristiano Ronaldo's life forever. Number one, I promise we're gonna win this for you. The final of the Euro, the 25th minute. Cristiano Ronaldo is in tears on the pitch. He's just been injured by Payet and has to abandon his teammates. That was a, a moment who um, shocked all the, all the world. For Portugal, it's a terrible blow. I said I feel very sad for our captain, our best player, the best player in the world. So we start to think it's not possible. Cristiano had the unique opportunity of winning his first trophy with his country, his nation. It was also a unique occasion for him to differentiate himself from his biggest rival, Leo Messi, who hadn't won a major trophy with Argentina. Devastated by this injury, Cristiano Ronaldo broke down in tears. I was trying to push, uh, 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 motivate him to continue to see, no, it's, it's a little pain, you can do it. I felt that, uh, that, that, that situation and, and then I said, I promise we're gonna win this for you. This sentence re-motivated Cristiano. He was so determined to get Portugal a title that he turned into a coach. And his teammates wanted to win the trophy for him, which they did. So beautiful. We sometimes think of CR7 as being selfish, but he's a true leader who inspires his teammates. Primeiro lugar, quero agradecer aos meus companheiros, sem a ajuda e compromisso de todos. Um... Part of the reason CR7 is so good today is thanks to his talent, is thanks to his teammates, but it's also because he had to fight tooth and nail from a young age to achieve his dreams. Number two. I was worried because there was a possibility of him giving up playing football. For Cristiano, everything could have stopped before it had even started. At 15 years old, he was diagnosed with a serious heart problem. His career was under threat. His heart raced a lot when he wasn't running. His mother, who had always nurtured and protected Cristiano, was worried. The surgical operation was endless. After a day of intense stress, the news broke. Everything had gone well. A few days later, Cristiano was back playing football. It was like he was running even faster after this operation. Cristiano was too strong. Cristiano was too determined. Nothing could stop him from becoming a great player, especially not the haters. Number three, I was expelled after I threw a chair on my teacher. He disrespected me. You all know it. Don't piss off Cristiano Ronaldo. One of his teachers experienced this firsthand. He made fun of Cristiano's Madeira accent and told him he had no chance of becoming a professional. CR7 threw a chair at him. This moment of madness shows two things. One, Cristiano was definitely not made for school. And two, the Portuguese star wouldn't let anyone stand in the way of his dream of becoming a footballer. Number four. Boss, you have to sign him. You just have to. August 6th, 2003. Cristiano's career took off. At 18 years old, he was playing for Sporting and faced Manchester United in a friendly match. You know what happened next. Cristiano Ronaldo played an unbelievable match. And poor John O'Shea, who had to mark him, paid the price. It was so costly that Rio Ferdinand and Roy Keane trolled him worse than ever after the game. He needed an oxygen mask. He had to go see the doctor after match. That's how bad a state he was in. When it got to halftime, Phil Neville even asked Ferguson to sign Ronaldo. Boss, you've got to sign him. You've got to sign him. Sir Alex responded very calmly to his player. Okay, okay, don't worry. We are going to get it sorted. Ferguson also talked about the extent to which the players were under young Cristiano's charm. In the plane on the way back, they begged me to sign him. He's one of the most talented young players I've ever seen. 
Since then, no player with as much talent has played for Manchester United. Obviously not including Lingardinho. The numbers don't lie. Real recognizes real. In short, talent, CR7 has it. But did he have the mentality to become the best? Number 5. Are we betting on you to become the best striker in the world? When CR7 signed for Man United, he was still just a player with potential. But one man made him invincible. His father, Jose Dennis. However, the two men shared a very complicated relationship. Jose Dennis was a soldier in Africa. When he returned to Portugal, he was depressed, violent, alcoholic. But Jose Dennis also inspired CR7 because he believed in him when no one else did. Because he told all his friends that CR7 would become the best striker in the world. They laughed, but Jose Dennis knew. When he signed for Manchester United at 18, his father said to him, you will become the best attacker in the world. Cristiano replied, it's possible that I become the best player, but not the best goal scorer. His father said to him, do you want to bet? He pushed him to believe in his ability. This confidence pushed Cristiano to work hard, to push himself further, to work like a madman, to prove his father right. Obviamente, no, nada es por coincidencia. Um, el talento no vale de nada si no pones trabajo duro. Number six. Cristiano, you want to go one day, two days, one week? You can go. In 2005, Cristiano was already indispensable to Manchester United. But he was also going through a very difficult period. His father had been hospitalized due to liver problems linked to alcohol. He shared his unhappiness with Ferguson, who didn't hesitate for a second. He sent Cristiano straight to his sick father. We'll miss you here because you're important, but your father is your priority. That meant CR7 would miss multiple weeks of competition. And not just matches against Stoke and Brighton. He would miss key games in the Premier League and the Champions League. When Ferguson told me that, I said to myself, this guy is incredible. Jose Dinis died a few days later. A tragedy which traumatized Cristiano, who will never touch a drop of alcohol. But while Chris lost his father by blood at Manchester, he found another in Sir Alex Ferguson. Yeah, I'm gonna speak, I speak with him um, often. Yeah. So we have a fantastic uh, relationship. Time, you say, I'm Cristiano, you're the best. Don't, don't worry about the rest. So it's, it's a fantastic, I miss you. Number seven. Relax, Chris, because you are the one who's going to make the difference. We all know Cristiano has won lots of trophies. Los números no mienten. But his trophy is the Champions League. At the start of 2016, he'd won it twice. Many people would be happy to win it once, <coughs> Man City fans. <coughs> but one man would allow him to add three more to his trophy cabinet. Zinedine Zidane. Y bueno, me alegro poder estar con, eh, con, con, este, con este jugador que, que para mí es el, el mejor. The French coach always defended him. Porque soy el entrenador y, y yo quiero a Cristiano. Pero sabe lo de los pitos, de todas formas, yo creo que también me, me, me pitaron a mí, también a todos. He completely transformed CR7. At 31 years old, Cristiano still wanted to play every match. But Zidane convinced him to relax, to be fresh during crucial games. He said, you know, Chris, you can't play all the matches. Give me confidence. If you listen to me, you will prolong your sportive career. And plus, you will better finish your season. CR7 was convinced. He has won five Champions League in total and is still at the top of the game at 35 years old. Zizou's advice wasn't too bad, was it, Chris? Cristiano appreciated the honesty of Zidane's advice. It allowed him to catch up with Messi in the race for the Ballon d'Or, since CR7 won it two more times under Zizou's command. It also allowed him to reach the top of the rankings for goal scorers in the Champions League, a field where CR7 now outclasses La Pulga. But Cristiano's exploits in the UCL have also influenced his family. Number eight. If I win the Champions League, you stop alcohol and drugs. In all the 
O Ronaldo já ganhou todos os prémios cá no mundo. Todos. Repetido, está a a porta está aberta para a próxima. Sim, senhor. Do you know this guy? It's Hugo, Cristiano's older brother. And CR7 saved his life. In 2014, Hugo was dangling on the precipice. Drugs, alcohol, his life was in danger. So Cristiano Ronaldo made a deal with him. If CR7 won the Champions League, Hugo had to stop everything. It was a huge challenge, but nothing to frighten Cristiano. He won the Champions League thanks to an epic win over Atletico. That night, he ran to Hugo and hugged him. The younger brother had become an inspiration for the older brother. Now, it's your turn. Hugo fulfilled his part of the deal. He became sober, and Cristiano helped pay for his treatment. Cristiano is generous, and not just with his family members. He never hesitates to give to people in need and share moments with those who look up to him. And if you still think CR7 is selfish at the end of this video, there's nothing we can do for you guys. Number 9. Yeah, not bad for a 33-year-old. Age is not important. I feel good. I feel motivated. Exciting. In April 2018, Cristiano scored one of the most beautiful goals in Champions League history. This bicycle kick worthy of Captain Tsubasa. After 25 seconds of feeling really frustrated, I thought back to what Cristiano had done. It was really amazing. I found myself alongside him and I asked him, how old are you, Cristiano? And then, He looked at me and said, yeah, not bad for a 33-year-old, huh? That night, Cristiano impressed the legend and was given a standing ovation by Juventus Stadium. Moved, he remembered this homage. He was so moved that a few months later... Foi fácil, foi um, uma decisão fácil, uh, vendo o poderio que tem a Juventus. Como disse, uh, muitas das vezes, para mim é uma das melhores equipas do mundo. A decision which shows CR7 is far from only being motivated by money. Na la vida, uh, há coisas mais importantes que o dinheiro. É importante, sim, é importante, não estou a mentir, mas não foi a la, la prioridade. His priorities? The feeling, the level of respect he's shown, and of course, completing challenges everyone thinks are impossible. Number 10. Dad, is it true you lived there? This is how Cristianinho reacted when his father showed him where he had lived when he was a child. Cristiano Ronaldo grew up in extreme poverty, in Madeira and Lisbon. We didn't have toys or Christmas presents. He didn't always eat until he was full and hung out next to McDonald's near his home in the hope that someone would give him some food. His children have grown up in luxury. They think everything is easy, that everything falls from the sky. That's why CR7 took Cristianinho to the place he used to live in Lisbon. He wanted to show him everything that he had experienced, everything that he overcame. He couldn't believe his eyes. CR7 wanted to pass on his values of hard work and sacrifice to his children. These same values forged him. These same values took him to the top. Ultimately, one quote can sum up what we think of Cristiano Ronaldo, the man who never drops his head. The man who is more generous than some people think. The man who is still one of the best players on the planet at 35 years old. We'll miss you when you retire.